टू शिक्षा दिशा टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द चैप्टर नंबर थ्री फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री सिक्स ओके अर्लियर वी हैव ऑलरेडी कवर चैप्टर वन एंड चैप्टर टू सो वी हैव अंडरस्टूड द डिवाइडेशन ऑफ द पीरियड ऑफ ह्यूमन हिस्ट्री एंड आल्सो वी हैव लुक्ड एट द डिफरेंट साइट्स एज हैज बीन डिफाइंड बाय द एन सी आर टी ओके सो दिस इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड एज अ बेस which we are, will help you to understand the standard books when you will move to the standard it will be a very easy task for you to understand because you must have developed the good base so today let us start uh, with the chapter number 3 and we will understand the further development in the history so we will be covering from gathering to growing food so how the food was grown and the later development what all happened okay the beginning of the farming and herding perhaps they began looking after plants protecting them from birds and animal so that they could grow and seed could ripen in this way people became farmers so it is referring to the hunter and gatherers which we have already understand that who were the hunter and gatherers so it is referring to the same people right so they have understood about the plants and how to protect them from birds and animal and uh, they also started understanding the different cycles of animals as well so this is what exactly it is referring okay so in the next uh, what happened that the first animal uh, to be tamed when it is having as to be tamed means they have started rearing or uh, uh, like the cattle or the sheep or goats they have started rearing in the farms okay so the first animal to be tamed was the wild ancestors of the dog later people and encouraged animal that were relatively gentle to come near to the camps where they lived so of course this is what we were referring like there were camps they have started uh, as we understood they started uh, making huts and the homes as well so this has the uh, huts where they could uh, live and they also Uh, grown some plants and along with that they also tamed the uh, other animals as well and the first animal which they tamed was the nearest ancestor of the dog so and definitely it is referring that those animals they tamed or uh, rare uh, those animal which were gentle because if they will try to uh, tame a wild animal it was possibility that uh, they might get killed so they wanted to avoid first they must have understood the behavior of the animal and then according to that they have started taming those animals right so let's move these animals such as sheep goat cattle and also the pig lived in herds and most of them ate grass so these were herbivores and some of them uh, probably like the dog uh, ancestor may be carnivores okay often people protected these animal from attacks by other wild animal this is how they became herder so now we have understood that how they became farmer and how they became herder so here by taming animal and by rearing animal they became herders as well so now it is uh, explaining that what is the domestication so let us understand the what is the term domestication mean very often plants and animal that are uh, tended by people become different from wild plants and animal because what they have started doing they understood the cycle as well and they understood that which all plants are important for the consumption and according to that they started making changes in them probably they started going uh, in the backyard or the places where they were living okay so according the plants also uh, changed this is because people uh, select plants and animal for the domestication they selected those plants and animals so now it here is the explanation that how those plants and animals changed or domesticated those plants and animals that are not prone to disease they also select the plants that yield large size grain and they have strong stalks capable of bearing the weight of ripen ripe grain so it is important that the if they are growing wheat or rice or any other crop or any plant 
so it is important they must be disease free otherwise there would be no point of uh, planting such kind of uh, crop okay which uh, will not produce any grain or uh, other thing which they are uh, looking for right and they uh, should be capable enough to provide the large size grain so they can feed upon uh, their large family or big family or uh, themselves and uh, plant should also fight with the diseases okay and they must also have the strong stock right so these were the things they were looking for and among the animal what they did they, those are the relatively gentle are selected for breeding of course because gentle uh, animals are more desired rather than wild animal as we understood because there was always a threat of being attacked by a wild animal that is why they avoided to tame the wild animal rather than they uh, always try to tame the gentle animal as a result gradually domesticated animal and plants become different from the wild animal and plants so yes this is what we were referring that how they adapted the new uh, environment or new surrounding or the people uh, who were uh, planting them okay. because of uh, their protection they also got changed how we will understand it in further uh, for example the teeth and the horn of the wild animals are usually much larger than those of the domesticated animals so here uh, the clear cut distinction has been mentioned that the uh, those animals or the plants like first it is referring to the animals that how they adapted they because if a wild animal will be there it must be having the uh, big horns and sharp tooth and you know, right and once they started taming those uh, animals then gradually because they were receiving the food from the owner and they do not need to work hard or they do not need to fight with the other wild animals that is how genetic changes also occurred in them and that is how those animals changed or their size changed in terms of their tooth uh, skeleton these things also got changed over the time domestication was a gradual process that took place in many parts of the world it began about 12000 years ago virtually all the plants and animal produce that we use as food today is a result of domestication of course as we understand that today uh, the, the farming has uh, gone on to the next level we are uh, getting grains or we are moving to the uh, on those parts and we are rearing to the animal or the grains which we are obtaining today if it is wheat or rice or anything it is big it has uh, the other qualities uh, which are better than the earlier quality which used to be 12000 years ago right so gradually those changes occurred so which we were talking about that how it got changed and it was a gradual process right that is why genetic <coughs> changes also occur okay so this was the process of domestication what changes occurred how what happened what was the importance and what was the result okay a new way of life so what was the new way of life as grain had to be stored for both food and seed people had to think of way of shorting it in many areas they began making large clay pots or wok basket or dug pits into the grounds so of course we understand that once a farmer has uh, done like uh, grain has ripened it has been cut it has been sorted now they need to store it somewhere so they can use it for the uh, entire year probably wheat or rice whatever they were growing as per the area or the availability of seeds so they need to protect it not only from the uh, uh, natural disasters but also 
from getting robbed or other things whatever the thre threats were there so they also started thinking that how we can store until unless we do not get the uh, next uh, uh, grains or the wheat whichever they were growing whatever they were growing okay. so that how they thought about the pots and uh, started storing in the baskets and also dig pits into so you will also see that uh, granaries have also been found in harappa uh, civilization so they understood at that time that uh, grain plays an important role and uh, it must be stored in an open and airy place so that uh, it could be protected from the germs as well so storing animal so like they started rearing the animal and what was the purpose the purpose was like they provided milk which is an important source of food and uh, and meat whenever they require require uh, required right so whenever they wanted to get the food probably in the uh, scar time so they have the animals in the stocks which they rear so they might use them for the meat and for the other purposes as well Okay. animals that are reared can be used as a store food in case of the scarcity right so finding out about the first farmers and the herders we have already uh, developed the base about the herders and the farmers that what kind of development happened and how it proceed so let us understand further that you will notice a number of blue scars like it is referring to the map earlier we have already uh, seen each mark a site from where archaeologists have found evidence of early farmers and herders so it is referring to those sites which we uh, already have seen in the uh, chapter 1 and chapter 2 so whenever you revise look at those uh, sites which have been marked in blue so it is referring to those sites okay. these are found all over the subcontinent and some of the most important one are in the northwest in present day kashmir and in east and south india so these are the important location which i have already underlined northwest in the present day kashmir and in east and south india right why these were important so we will understand that as well one of the most exciting finding uh, including remain of the burnt grain so archaeologists have also found the burnt grain so they have, because Uh, what archaeologists do they dig up the area and they understand that what all things were there and uh, is there any change which have been made so they also found that uh, the burn grain so it also provide the uh, some kind of information about the that how people started using those grain and probably that was a that might have been a uh, field that got fire or Uh, because of some other purpose they might have burned the grain right so these are the important site and the grain and the bones which have been found so mug up these fact because this becomes an important uh, fact or uh, important thing for the examination purpose because most of the time direct questions have been asked from these sites and these days if you will uh, look at the pattern then you will clearly understand that upsc has moved uh, on asking or on the questions uh, where there is an importance of geography it is not asking the uh, most of the direct fact face uh, fact based question rather than it is asking geography based plus fact based question that is why locations and what have been found and where have been found becomes very very important so these are uh, 10 to 12 sites and what all things have been found so becomes really important like mehargarh koldeva again mehargarh guf gufkral then burjhum chirand halur payampalli what have been found where have been found where are these cities located or these places are located just mark those places note down on your uh, notes and uh, revise them multiple times and understand the geography in detail okay so let's move ahead 
let us understand further developments so what is referring now the towards a settled life so archaeologists have found the traces of huts or houses at some sites for instance in burj hum which we have earlier seen uh, in that list as well in burj hum in present day kashmir so this is a really important fact because earlier a question has been asked directly from here that where is burj hum and what have been found okay present day kashmir people built pit house pit house means after digging something into the earth and they used to live and so what was the use we will understand that as well which were dug into the ground which steps leading into them these may have provided shelter in cold weather archaeologists have also found the cooking hearths both inside and outside the hut so hearth provide a kind of a clue that people used to make food outside of the uh, uh, house or inside as well right most probably in the winters they used to cook inside and whenever there were summer time they used to cook outside so this hearth clearly indicate about that we suggest that the deeping on the weather depending on the weather people cook food either indoor or outdoor as we have already understood so stone tools have also been found from many sites as well and many of these are different from earlier paleolithic tools and that is why they are called neolithic so earlier we have already divided uh, the uh, timing time periods in uh, paleolithic then mesolithic then neolithic so it is referring to the neolithic period so the stone tools which have been found were different from the earlier one which were of the paleolithic time so we have already understood in the chapter 1 and chapter 2 that uh, not uh, like they were also using some stone or some stone tools which were uh, they used to use in paleolithic times as well right so apart from microliths and the new development which happened they also used to have those tools which they developed or they made in paleolithic time so these included tools that were polished to give a fine cutting edge and mortar and pestles used for grinding grain and other plant produce so it is a really important thing to understand that what development uh, were made uh, to the tools in the neolithic time right in the mesolithic we understand that the microlith developed microlith tools started using but now in neolithic what what is happening the polished tool have starting uh, started developing uh, with the cutting edge and the mortar and the pestles and the grinding to put the grinding grain and other development have started happening right so this is really important thing. tool of the paleolithic type continued as we were we were just discussing few moments ago continued to be made and used and remember that some tools were also made of bones not only stones but bones were also very important for the uh, that time for the people of that time so many kind of earthen pots have also been found these were the uh, sometimes decorated and were used for storing things because we have already understood that why uh, storing food was important and what was the purpose of uh, storing food and how they uh, stored the food right so this is a important paragraph let us move ahead and understand the further developments that what happened apart from that they began weaving clothes using different kind of material for example cotton that could now be grown so it is referring to the time of neolithic where the cotton uh, could also be grown and they started using the cotton so these uh, type of reference also uh, been seen in harappa civilization as well where they were using the uh, clothes woven using cotton okay and uh, we will understand the uh, in later chapter that what all things were found in Harappa and uh, what developments were happening in the Neolithic or Mesolithic or uh, in that in Harappan period right? and how it impacted and what kind of development happened at that time. So it is now uh, providing the information about the tribes and uh, since we also read it about the tribes in the polity uh, so basis or the basic understanding type would be important for us 
So what is tribes? Usually two or three generations live together in small settlement or villages. Most families are related to one another and group such families from a tribe. So tribes are basically living in the farms or later in the farms but earlier they used to live in the forest. Members of the tribe follow occupations such as hunting, gathering, farming, herding and fishing. Usually women do most of the agriculture work including preparing the ground, showing seed, looking after the growing plants and harvesting grain. Children often look after plant, driving away the animal and birds might eat them. Women also thresh, husk and grind grain. And men usually lead large herd of animal in search of pasture. Children have to look after the small flocks. So it is clear cut providing the information that what work were assigned to the women and what were assigned to the men. But it was not so rigid because these are just uh, a basic understanding. Some tribes could be different where the women must be doing some different work and men were, uh, uh, must be doing different work. Right? So mostly we just need to understand that what are the tribes and where they used to live. Okay, and still there are the tribes which we will understand as we will move ahead, right? So now it is referring to a site, Mehergad, which we have already referred in that list as well. So Mehergad is really important uh, site of Harappan Valley Civilization. So Mehergad, this uh, site is located in a fertile plain near the Bolan Pass, which pass which it becomes really important that which site is uh, near to which particular geography. So pay attention on that as well. So Mehergad was near to the Bolan Pass, okay, on a, in a fertile plain, which is one of the most important uh, routes into Iran. Mehergad was probably one of the places where women and men learned to grow barley and wheat and rear sheep and goats for first time in this area. So we have already seen this that uh, what development was happening and uh, in the first chapter right where we also understood that uh, 8000 years ago what was happening 4000 years ago what was happening and 2500 years ago uh, some big kingdoms uh, were born right like Magad and others. So this we have already seen so try to go through the chapter 1 as well. So we are also uh, understanding here as well that why Mehergad is important uh, because men and women learn to grow barley and wheat and the rear sheep and goat for the first time in this area right archaeologists who excavated the site found the evidence of many kind of animal bo bones uh, from the earliest level so archaeologists uh, dig any site in a different strata right so first level, then second level, then third level, and they keep on digging as uh, the evidence, uh, they receive, they get the evidences, right? So it is referring to that level. So these included bones of the wild animals such as deer, pig in later levels. They found more bones of sheep and goat. And in still later levels, what they got, they Cattle bones are the most most common. So they uh, found the uh, cattle bones, sheep bones and goat bones. So these are the things which archaeologists have found in the excavation. Right. So let us see. So what we were referring that the here, if you look at the uh, these levels, then it, it is uh, very much clear that what I was referring. So these are the levels right one two three four so this is how uh, the archaeologists dig any uh, site okay when archaeologists are digging at uh, at an excavation site so what they do they they label they dig level one then level two then level three then level four which we have already understood and what is the importance of doing that uh, because different layer may provide the different uh, kind of things uh, okay probably in the later time what kind of development happened and prior to that what type of society was there or what type of uh, people used to live or what type of animal used to uh, live in that place so these were the things other 
things which have been found at mehrgarh included remain of a square or a rectangular house which uh, you can see at the right hand side each house had four or more compartment as have been shown in the image right so apart from this bu uh, burials also very important because burial is uh, one such an uh, arrangement because several burial sound ha uh, sites have been found at mehrgarh in one instance the dead person was buried with goat so understand this because several times this question have been asked that where could be we uh, see this type of arrangement where a person have been uh, buried with goats so this site is mehrgarh right so keep this in your mind it is an important fact for the examination then daujali having this is a site on the hills near brahmaputra valley so refer to the map uh, which we covered in to uh, chapter 1 and probably we have also seen into chapter 2 so you will see that uh, at the right most uh, uh, side and northeast part of the india you will see the, this particular location near brahmaputra valley right close to the uh, route leading into china and myanmar here stone tools including mortars and pestles have been found these indicates that people were probably growing grain and preparing food uh, from it and other uh, finds include jadeite a stone that may have been brought from china because jadeite is really an important uh, stone in china and uh, you will see several uh, type of uh, Uh, things have been made using the different uh, if you will uh, see the dragon uh, statues uh, or small uh, dragon statues you have been carved using uh, jadeite on jadeite and different kind of uh, uh, carvings also been done on jadeite so it is it plays a really important part for the uh, chinese culture right so for india also because we had close ties and relations with the chinese civilization so we also used to uh, get the jadeite from there right so also common are find to tools made of fossil wood ancient wood fossil wood means ancient wood that has hardened to stone because uh, if because of the pressure and uh, uh, might have been there for uh, several thousand years that is why it has converted into fossil wood and the pottery has also been found at where daujali hadding so where is it it is to the our northeast near brahmaputra valley so keep this in your mind where this location is brahmaputra valley right so what other things were happening or uh, what uh, other civilizations Uh, were getting uh, developed or what kind of development happening into the other civilization so this has also been provided so in turkey one of the amongst uh, most famous neolithic sites uh, katal huyuk keep this in your mind katal huyuk where is katal huyuk katal huyuk in turkey and which is what is this important neolithic site katal huyuk three things Tur turkey neolithic site katal huyuk so where is katal huyuk it is in turkey why is it important because of the it is a one of the most important neolithic site okay was found in turkey several things were brought from the great distance and it has also provided uh, the example that what all great things have been brought uh, from the different areas uh, like front uh, flint from syria cowries from red sea uh, shells from the mediterranean sea and they used in the settlement so different things were used uh, in this particular site so keep this in your mind because first the site is important uh, which country it has been found okay and which type of site is it and then what things have been brought from where so these are the three or four things which becomes really important so these are the only things in this chapter in third chapter so we have covered third chapter and we have understood uh, the different things that from uh, being gatherer and herders then how the gatherer and hunters started rearing the uh, cattle and the 
animals as well and how the civilizations now starting or now starting develop so this becomes really important i have already marked uh, important things in the colorful uh, manner so just do one thing just pause the video and try to note down important things which i have already mentioned revise them multiple times try to solve questions so you will be good to go when uh, you will appear in the examination you will see the question and you would be confident enough to mark it correctly right so keep revising we i will see you in the chapter 4